Hello, this is channel Easy Self Host. In this video, we are going to run Jellyfin, the free and open source media streaming server that can stream your own media files to any of your devices. This video will focus on basic setup with downloading or file managing capabilities, but will not cover advanced features like transcoding. And like always, we are going to run Jellyfin using Docker Compose and will set up proxy server with HTTPS. Now, let's get started. This is the Docker Compose file we're going to use to run Jellyfin. Like before, we're going to declare the Docker network ProxyNet, which is used to connect the Jellyfin server to our proxy server. Next, we have some Docker volumes. The first volume, Jellyfin Media, is for storing media files. By default, the Docker volume lives in the server file system. So if your media files come from a network share like NFS from another server, you can edit the driver options here to let your container access those files. For the demo, we are going to rely on the local file system for storage. The other two volumes are for storing configurations and caches. Then let's define our Jellyfin service. The Docker image we are going to use is from the official source. Then I configure the hard limit for memory consumption for the Jellyfin server. With this setting, the Jellyfin server will crash and restart when it exceeds the memory limit. I've seen people mention that Jellyfin server will sometimes use a lot of memory even without transcoding. So I add this setting to protect other services. But if you are going to use transcoding, or if you don't worry about its memory usage, you can disable this setting. Then we are going to define the port and Docker network for this service. And for the volume section, we map all three of our Docker volumes to their directories. And finally, in this Docker Compose file, we need to add this environment setting for the URL we are intended to access the Jellyfin service. To properly set up this URL, we are also going to set up the DNS for our domain and the proxy server. I'm using caddy for proxy, so I add this proxy rule to proxy the domain media.home.easyselfhost.com to the Jellyfin server with port 8096. For the DNS setting, I've always had this wildcard rule to map all the subdomains of home.easyselfhost.com to my home server. After the configuration is ready, we can go to the command line of our server and navigate to the directory that has the docker compose file. And from here, we can simply run docker compose app d to bring up the service. Then we need to refresh the caddy config. Let's navigate to the caddy directory and run docker compose restart if your caddy service is already running or run docker compose app d if it's the first time you are running caddy server after this we can go to the browser and navigate to the domain name we've set up now we land in the jellyfin welcome page from here we can start setting up our server the first step is to add an admin user and set up its password then we are going to set up our first media library a media library has its own content type like movies or music. With the proper content type, it's easier for Jellyfin to fetch metadata for your media files. Next, we need to add folders for the library. We've set up the slash media directory for storing media files, but it's likely that we will have multiple libraries under this directory. So it's better that we create some subfolders under this directory. If you have file browser set up like my last video, you can navigate to the media folder and create a subfolder there. Otherwise, you can use command line to do that. Then we can go back to the Jellyfin and select the subfolder for storing movies. Then you will have some metadata related setting. You can set them according to your location or preference. Then you can create your first media library. Now you can create some more libraries or continue with the setting. You can always revisit this setting in the dashboard after the server is set up. Now let's log in our account. After that, you will see an empty library if you don't have files in the folder already. There are multiple ways you can add media to your library. One simple way is to upload files to your server using tools like File Browser. We can simply drag and drop media files here. This is my YouTube video, but to simulate real-world situation, let's change its file name to a movie title. A good file name including title and a year can help Jellyfin fetch its metadata. Now we can go back to Jellyfin and navigate to the dashboard to let the server scan the library. Jellyfin will scan the libraries from time to time, but you can also manually start this operation. After this, when we go to a library, we can see our video get recognized as a Pulp Fiction movie. Here we can start the playback within the browser. Well, obviously, it's still my YouTube video. Well, it's convenient to just upload files to our server. It's not efficient if you want to download media. 
since that way you need to download the media and then re-upload it to the server. So it's better that we set up a downloader that download files directly to our Jellyfin library. The tool I'm presenting is called PyLoad, and we can also set it up using Docker Compose. This is the Docker Compose file for the PyLoad. Most importantly, you need to add the Jellyfin media volume to here, so it can download files to that volume. The volume name from another Docker Compose file starts with its directory name, in this case Jellyfin, and followed by an underscore and the volume name from that Compose file. For the PyLoad service, the Docker image is made by the Linux server.io project. We also need to add ProxyNet to the networks, so we can access it from our proxy server. Here we also need to set these environments to let PyLoad run as root so it can access files from Jellyfin volume. I'll have a future video to talk about a more secure way to do this. Then we need to mount the Jellyfin media volume to the download folder of this container. And of course, we also need to add a proxy setting for the PyLoad service. Then let's do our new service routine in the command line by first starting the PyLoad service and then refresh the caddy proxy rule. Now back to the browser and we can go to the PyLoad using its domain name. The default username and the password are both PyLoad. The PyLoad web UI can be a little confusing if you just start using it. To download the file, you can start by clicking the plus sign. The package name actually specifies the folder name you want to download the files. So in our case, we can tap in movies. For the links, I have a fake movie links to use here. And now you can click add package and the download will start. After the download is finished, you can navigate to the file section and you will see the new file is downloaded under the movies directory. Then let's go back to Jellyfin and scan the libraries again. Then we can go to library and say our new movie title, which is downloaded from a link directly. To watch your content on the server, you will need to download Jellyfin client software. On the Jellyfin website, there is a list of recommended clients including both first party and third party. Here we can download the desktop Jellyfin media player. The download is hosted on GitHub and you can choose your platform. After installing the client software, the first step is to connect to our Jellyfin server. We have domain name set up so we can just enter our domain name. Then it's similar to the web UI, you can log into your account and start browsing your media. Clients on other platforms like smart TVs or mobile phones are very similar. That's all for a basic setup of a Jellyfin server with file managing and downloading capabilities. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the configuration files in this video on GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.